Hello, Tech Chuck here. Today in my shop, we're going to be looking at a radio that I purchased off eBay. It's a vintage tube radio. It works on AC and also DC batteries. On the front, it says it's a Greb. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it's from the uh, 1940s, 1941, somewhere in there. Uh, looking at the writer schematics, I found one in 1941 for a similar model. Um, so it, it, it's in that time period, early 40s. One of the things that I found that was fascinating with it was it's a portable vacuum tube radio and the fact that it has this nifty cover that comes down that you can latch and carry it around with you protecting the front. However, one of the things that is wrong with it is that the fabric that was holding these two pieces together has uh, broken. And that brings up some interesting uh, problems in restoring it, which I'll talk about in a little bit. It came with the knobs, so that was good. Won't have to be uh, looking for knobs. The uh, radio is in fairly good uh, condition. The uh, bottom of the speaker grill here is a little frayed. A little bit of light area here. I'm not sure what caused uh, that. Um, the plastic uh, screen protecting the dial is in pretty good shape. That'll buff up uh, very nicely. And uh, so overall it's not too bad. Um, it is missing the back cover. So I'm going to have to make a cover for it. Also came with the antenna, internal antenna. So I have no idea what the back of this radio looks like. I'm assuming that the top portion up here has some air holes down here and some type of vent up at the top. That's the way most of the radios uh, that I've looked at uh, look like. Then at the bottom is where the batteries go and it has a little flip here, leather strap with a clap clip on it that is supposed to hold the door down. So I'm making the assumption that there is a door down here, much like the cover is with a little flap of the fabric material that you could lift up, change the batteries and put it back down without getting into the, the radio itself. On the front of the radio, it says that it's a, a Greb. However, when I looked at the chassis, particularly down here where the tube locations are shown, you see that it's a BP12Q. And in looking for that particular chassis, I found that it is actually a Girard chassis. Uh, writers uh, showed a uh, BP12A and B, however there was no Q. I've also seen some references to a D chassis. Looking at the uh, chassis, the buyer said all the tubes were there, but as you can see there are two tubes missing. That disappointed me a little bit because um, it could be that the two tubes that were missing were good, so I wouldn't have to uh, replace them. As it is, I have to replace them whether they were good or not good because they're missing. Uh, it upsets me when eBay sellers describe a unit and give you misinformation, uh, but there's not a whole lot of, you can do about it. I wasn't about to complain about it and has, ask to have it returned and all of that, though I did make comments uh, in the seller's uh, comment section about the tubes were missing. The uh, chassis is in pretty good shape. Um, the f wires going to the batteries have some cracks in them. I'm not sure if I'm going to have to uh, take and replace those wires uh, or not. 
I don't want to necessarily repair them with tape. Um, so that's something I'll have to decide down the road. Also, if you look in here, you notice that the tuning capacitor is sitting at an angle, putting the tuning dial here off center. It really should be more like back like that. So the grommets are going to need to be replaced and uh, so we can get that on a level surface and that way the tuning will work. Getting back to the chassis uh, nomenclature, as I said, the writers described a Girard uh, BP 12A and B. Um, I looked at this chassis, compared it to the schematic, and uh, one of the big differences is that the audio output tube is a 3Q5 as opposed to what the schematic showed as a 1T5. So that might be why the chassis has a Q in it, is because the audio tube is a 3Q5. Um, I'm guessing at that. If anyone knows anything more than that, let me know in the comments down below. Um, I did check the speaker coil and the audio transformer coils and they are okay. Inside the chassis, of course, I'm going to have to replace all these wax capacitors. Um, up here is the resistor to drop the voltage for the uh, filaments and uh, that's going to need to be replaced. It's cracked. Looks like it's gotten overheated. Um, I'll have to calculate what the value is because the value of this is nowhere where the value is on the schematic. But remember the schematic is using a 1 volt vacuum tube where this is using a 3 volt uh, filament tube. Um, and there's also a electrolytic can here that has two capacitors in it so that'll need to be changed. Getting back to the chassis or the uh, case this brings up an interesting question. I searched the internet and cannot find any specific answers on it. And that is, uh, should I restore the radio or just preserve the radio? I know in the car collecting business, uh, there's a big difference between restore and preservation. Preservation means you keep the car the same as it was. You don't paint it. You don't uh, uh, change different parts on the car. All you do is get it in running order, preferably with original parts for that car. So basically it looks like an old car and not like a new car. Restoration, from what I understand, is where you replace everything on the car, you paint it, uh, you fix it up, uh, try and use original parts, but if you can't, you make the parts or buy replication parts, and you try and make it look like it's uh, brand new the day that the person bought it. So I'm in a dilemma on this radio is what to do. The case is in pretty bad shape. As you can see, it's, it's messed up really bad down here. And the, the, the sides, the person packed it with this fuzzy packing material that is sticking to it. Uh, the top isn't in too bad a shape, but as you can see, there's a lot of blemishes, scratches. And of course, it doesn't come with a back. So I'm going to have to make a back for it. And, of course, we also have this sliding door that's going to have to be repaired. If I repair the door by putting a strip of fabric down through here, it's going to look repaired. If I completely replace all of the fabric so it's one piece again, it's not going to match the radio. And, of course, the back isn't going to match the, the radio or the existing radio. So, there's a good question for you. Leave in your comments what you think I should do with it. Should I uh, restore it or should I preserve it. Uh, getting on to uh, see the next thing I want to discuss. The line cord came with it, but as you can see the line cord is a mess. Uh, so that will need to be replaced. The next thing I want to discuss are the batteries. I bought uh, two batteries off of uh, eBay. Actually bought three batteries. The other battery 
uh, doesn't is not used in this radio. And what I'm planning on doing with the batteries is uh, building reproductions of them. I've seen on other sites people have showed how to do it. You basically take the cover off. This is from the other battery that I practiced with. Take the cover off and then you can uh, on your computer using Photoshop you can clean it up to make it look almost uh, brand new. And then you can fit the batteries inside. In this case I have five 9 volt batteries that will go inside the B battery and I have three D cells that will go in the A battery. And that will provide the 4.5 volts for the filaments. Actually it's just two batteries so 7 volts for the filaments and 90 volts volts for the um, B battery. There's two B batteries at 45 volts each. And uh, I found these clips on eBay that I really liked. You can see they're flat for the 9 volt batteries. So I could see taking and, and stacking these next to one another and epoxying them down to the surface of the either plexiglass or whatever I'm going to use to, to make up the form of the battery and will make them easy to change and they're not going to move around. I won't have to wrap tape around I've seen on some uh, sites. So uh, that's pretty much what I'm going to talk about today. This was just an introduction of uh, what I'm going to be uh, doing. Um, it's going to be broken into three parts uh, in addition to this introduction. The first will uh, be getting the chassis working, getting it up and running, uh, replacing the capacitors, getting that uh, tuning capacitor corrected, uh, replacing maybe some wires, and that uh, ballast resistor in there for the filaments. I'll have to calculate that value, uh, make sure I put the right one in. The second uh, phase uh, will be the restoring of the cabinet. Uh, I'd like some feedback on that. Should I restore it or should I just clean it up and make a back for it and just repair uh, the door or should I uh, completely restore it to almost new condition? I'm kind of leaning in that direction, uh, but I want to hear from you YouTubers out there as to what I should do. Then the final uh, part will be uh, constructing these batteries that will uh, be replicas using uh, the printouts that I make of these scanned images and, and fixing up in Photoshop. So that's the project. It's uh, going to take a little bit of time to do. It's not something I'm going to get done in a week. So as I finish the different projects or phases of it, I will post them on YouTube. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, give me some feedback. Give me a thumbs up down below. And uh, this is Tech Chuck. Thank you for watching my video. And I hope that uh, it has been entertaining as well as educational. Thank you.